Ever wonder why almost every flight you take has around 180 seats? Not 120, not 250, but right around 180? This number isn't random. It's the result of decades of airline economics, engineering constraints, and ruthless profit optimization. For airlines, 180 seats isn't just a number. It's the sweet spot where everything from fuel burn to ticket pricing to turnaround time aligns roughly perfectly. 180 seats is the profitability sweet spot, the point where airlines make the most money per flight without overextending their resources. It all comes down to three factors, crew cost efficiency, operating cost optimization, and route flexibility. Each one plays a role in why this specific capacity dominates modern aviation. If you love uncovering the strategy and economics behind how the skies really work, consider subscribing. We break down aviation's hidden logic every week. Let's start with one of the biggest costs for any airline, crew. Every flight requires a certain number of pilots and flight attendants. But here's the trick. Their cost doesn't scale linearly with aircraft size. Whether a plane has 120 seats or 180 seats, you're still paying roughly the same two pilots up front. Think of it like splitting a taxi fare. If it costs $30 to get across town and you go alone, that's $30. But if you have two friends, now it's $10 each. Airlines work the same way. The more passengers sharing the fixed cost, the cheaper it becomes per person. Let's break it down. A 120-seat aircraft spreads that pilot cost across fewer passengers, so the per-seat expense is high. A 240-seat aircraft spreads it wider, but introduces new issues like higher fuel burn, longer boarding times, and airport limitations. 180 seats, though, hits the sweet spot. Large enough to spread costs efficiently, small enough to keep flexibility high. It's the same reason aircraft like the Boeing 737-800 and Airbus A320 became the backbones of nearly every airline fleet. They balance capacity and cost better than almost anything else. And it's not just about pilots. Cabin crews are regulated by safety rules. Generally one flight attendant per 50 passengers in the US, though this can vary internationally. So a 180 seat jet usually flies with just four attendants, another balance of efficiency and regulation. The result, every seat sold beyond the break-even threshold contributes directly to profit. That's the kind of math airlines love. Now let's talk about a concept that defines whether a flight makes money or not. The break-even load factor. It's the percentage of seats that need to be filled just to cover operating costs, fuel, maintenance, crew, and airport fees. Every airline tracks this obsessively. On smaller jets with fewer seats to sell, the number can hover around 80 to 85%. That means nearly every seat has to be full before a flight even breaks even. But with a 180 seat aircraft, that break even can drop by as much as 10 percentage points, sometimes down to the low 70s roughly. That's because more passengers are sharing the same fixed cost. Here's the beauty of it. Every additional seat sold after that point becomes profit. So the economics start to compound. That's why when you see those 180 seats planes constantly circling the world, it's not just coincidence, it's financial logic in motion. 180 seats lets airlines weather price drops, fill flights more consistently, and remain profitable even in lean seasons. It's not about having the biggest plane, it's about having the smartest one. Now, picture a popular route, say Los Angeles to Denver. About 360 people want to fly that route every day. The airline has options. It could run three 120-seat flights, two 180-seat flights, or one giant 360-seat flight. Which one makes the most sense? Running three smaller flights means more crew, more takeoffs, more maintenance cycles, and a lot more fuel burn during climb. It's expensive. Running one massive plane seems efficient, but it limits flexibility. Miss that flight and you're stuck waiting half a day. So airlines almost universally settle on two 180 seat flights, balancing cost efficiency with schedule flexibility. Passengers get more choices for departure times. And the airline maintains strong aircraft utilization, flying just enough to meet demand without wasting capacity. This is the delicate dance of airline scheduling. And 180 seats sits right in the middle of that equation. It's large enough to make every flight count 
small enough to keep frequency competitive, and efficient enough to dominate short to medium haul markets. From London to Lisbon, Dallas to Chicago, Tokyo to Seoul, this seat count rules the skies. If you're enjoying this breakdown of how numbers quietly shape the way we fly, hit that like button. It really helps more aviation fans find videos like this. Let's dig deeper into operating costs, the heart of airline profitability. The Boeing 737-800 averages about $3.76 per available seat kilometer, while the Airbus A320 sits slightly lower at $3.60. Those numbers may sound tiny, but across thousands of miles per flight, they mean everything. Each of these aircraft can generate roughly $5 million in profit per month, depending on utilization and load factor. That translates to about $28,000 per seat per month in pure contribution to the bottom line. Annual operating costs, around $14 million for the 737-800 and $12.8 million for the A320, depending on airline and route. This is why you see them everywhere. They've become the economic gold standard, the exact point where operational costs, range, and seating capacity balance almost perfectly. Every detail, from wing design to fuel burn to maintenance scheduling, has been optimized around this configuration. For decades, this 180-seat class has remained unbeatable. The dominance isn't theoretical, it's everywhere. Between the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 families, these aircraft make up more than three quarters of the world's commercial fleet. The A320 family alone accounts for roughly 56% of all narrow body utilization, a staggering share of global flights. 737-800, A320-200, 737-MAX-8, and A320-NEO all hover around that same golden seat count, 170 to 190. Even as airlines evolve toward newer models, that sweet spot barely shifts. It's baked into the infrastructure, from airport gate spacing to turnaround procedures. If a plane is too large, airports need longer runways and bigger gates. Too small and airlines lose efficiency. The 180-seat narrowbody threads that needle perfectly. It fits global infrastructure, meets demand curves, and delivers consistent margins flight after flight. Here's the real insight. When two rival manufacturers, Boeing and Airbus, arrive at the same design answer independently, that's not coincidence. It's the math of aviation converging on truth. 180 seats isn't just tradition. It's proof of concept that's been tested by tens of millions of flights across every continent. But there's another layer to this story. Flexibility. A 180-seat aircraft gives airlines agility. It can fly dense short hauls or stretch across six-hour routes with ease. It can serve major hubs in peak hours or pivot to secondary routes when demand shifts. For low-cost carriers, it's the perfect workhorse. Easy to fill, cheap to maintain, quick to turn around. For legacy carriers, it's the ideal feeder to long-haul hubs. And for airports, these jets are the lifeblood. They keep runways busy and gates full without overwhelming capacity. So when airplanes plan their fleets years in advance, this class becomes the default building block. Everything else, the 220-seat A321s, the smaller A220s, orbits around this middle ground. It's not just a seat count, it's the standard unit of global air travel. So, why 180 seats? It's the perfect intersection of everything airlines care about. Crew cost efficiency, break-even optimization, route flexibility, and operating cost precision. It's not about packing in the most people or keeping planes tiny and exclusive. It's about finding that one point where physics, economics, and passenger demand all meet in harmony. And that point, for now and likely decades to come, is right around 180 seats. The number that keeps airlines profitable, fleet standardized, and the global air network running like clockwork. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the hidden strategy behind what keeps the airline world spinning, hit subscribe, drop a comment with your favorite aircraft, and join us next week for another story from the skies.